Hi, and thank you for joining me for another video. Friends, today I want to talk to you about homosexuality and Judaism. And you know what? I feel a bit silly having to make a video to clarify this issue in the first place. Why? Because, friends, anyone who thinks that the Torah in some way condones or does not prohibit homosexual intercourse or foreplay is a fool. And I'll make it very simple, friends. It does. It's a 100% Isser Deraita. That means it's prohibited from the Torah. And this also includes what is known as Derek Avorim, which is other types of sexual foreplay between men, including oral sex, etc. And it's a bit silly that anyone nowadays would even try to entertain the notion that although the Torah does prohibit intercourse between men, it does permit other types of sexual foreplay between males. Well, friends, today I'm going to bring down the halacha to close this case once and for all. Okay? So starting off. We all know that the Torah calls homosexual sex a toeva, an abomination against the Almighty Himself. It says in Parashat Acharei, do not have sexual relations with a man as one does with a woman. And it's an abomination. It also says in Parashat Kedoshim, if a man lies with a man as with a woman, the two of them have done an abhorrent thing and they shall be put to death. So, friends, intercourse between two men cannot be tolerated or even exists within Kal Yisrael. And this is Torah, my friends. And next, Many will say that other forms of foreplay are not forbidden from the Torah. Really? Well, let's see. The Rambam states in Sefer Mitzvot and Hilchot Asurebiya that we are forbidden from deriving pleasure from any forbidden partner, even without sexual relations, through kissing, hugging, and the like. And he holds that this is a Torah prohibition. Unless someone thinks that the Rambam is alone in this, the Shulchan Aruch holds the exact same way. It states that whoever copulates with one of the forbidden relations without the actual act of sex, whether he hugged or kissed them or enjoyed skin-to-skin -skin contact, such a person is lashed and is suspended suspected of forbidden intercourse. And friends, those who need more opinions, the Shach and the Ramah, hold the exact same way. That even foreplay is an Isser Deraita. Not to mention that a man dressing like a woman is also an Isser Deraita. And it brings an onish from the Torah itself. It says it's they're punished by lashes. And this is in Sefer Mitzvot also. So the Halacha, my friends, is very clear on this issue. Which is why I'm so upset at the rabbinic leadership in the Jewish world today that have danced around this issue and have ultimately made the Torah and Judaism look ridiculous. Now, we're not stating that someone who has homosexual thoughts is sinning or is not a Jew. Now, if someone has inappropriate thoughts towards the same sex and doesn't act on it just because he doesn't have the opportunity to, this person is a heretic. But if someone who has these feelings and struggles with the desires and stops himself from acting, this person is not only not sinning, but but he's actually on a very high level. So then anyone who physically acts on those urges and worse, publicizes it and encourages other Jews to do the same is halakhically, in our opinion, in every way, a Gentile and not a Jew. And please, friends, don't act like this idea does not exist in Torah and in halakha. That the trap that people fall into nowadays, assuming that just because someone happens to be born from a Jewish mother, that this in some way sealed his fate as a Jew forever. Now, perhaps on an ethnic level, yes, but not in any area religiously, which is the only area that really counts. Which is why the Rambam, when referring to someone who worships idols, it says, a dayin hu lo Yisrael, that he is no longer a Jew. So how much more for someone who deliberately breaks one of the other three cardinal sins in Judaism? And again, this has nothing to do with a Jew sinning because we know that Chazal teach that a Jew who sins is still a Jew. Rather, we're talking about someone who deliberately sins and does not seek tshuva. And friends, even the Shulchan Aruch say that uh, Machal Shabbos is not a Jew in our eyes, but rather is worse than a Goy. So, how much more in this case, friends? You're probably thinking, why worse than a goy? Because a goy, we know, will have a chaylik and olam just by keeping the sheva mitzvahs. While these individuals cannot because they have accepted the mitzvot upon themselves and now know too much to turn back. In other words, in the eyes of heaven, yes, their din will still be as a Jew in the way that he will get punished for not keeping the mitzvot. But to us, he is not different from another non-Jew. In other words, he can't count for a minion and the wine he touches is not kosher. And again, this is clearly for some who has publicly stated that he has decided to take upon himself a homosexual lifestyle. Not someone who was struggling or is struggling and slipped and repented, but rather by deliberately sinning over and over again and worse, causing a chelot Hashem by teaching that the Torah, the halacha is not clear on this issue, the person becomes an enemy to the Torah and the Jews who follow it. And all those who support liberal interpretations of halacha really think that 200 years ago, the rabbis wanted to put individuals like this in harem 
to prevent the contamination of other Jews. Friends, please wake up and realize how far we've strayed from the Torah. And for everyone listening to me today who has dumbed down their common sense to such a level to justify not condemning such individuals publicly under the guise of compassion, please understand that anyone publicly who does not feel shame for what he does and rather goes on further to state that he will condone such decisions in others is a road deaf to the Amuna and does not need compassion or Hanufa but Tohacha. And friends, that's really all I have to say on this issue. So Torah is against homosexuality, whether it's the physical act of intercourse or foreplay. Thank you.